Baltimore is the winning team. Hello, everybody. It's Balmer Billy Sikorsky speaking of sports. What a day for the city of Baltimore. I'm so excited. I can't even contain myself. I mean, this is really, there is a God. There is a God. He is on high, and his name is Ray Lewis. Why are you so excited? Because we're Super Bowl champs. Yeah. We finally got a winner we? right now. You know, we. I was pretty down in the dumps yes, when, uh, when when the Earl of Baltimore passed on. Sure, you know, when he went over to the other side. But I'm going to tell you right now, it's all fine now all because we are Super Bowl champions of the world, and it's the greatest day for the purple and black. I'm so happy. I want to thank Joe Flacco, and I want to thank Harbaugh and everybody else. Do you believe in heaven and hell? I believe there's a heaven today. I'm walking around in it. Ah. Do you think Earl I'm Weaver went to? He- do you think Earl Weaver went to heaven or hell? Oh, I, I think he went to heaven. Of course, that's a, what a blasphemous, kind of what a blasphemous that, thing that is. I just like to get to know the man. I don't want to talk about Earl. I want to no, talk about a game. The happy oh, the su- it's the Super Yesterday Bowl. Yesterday was the Super Bowl. It's right. World Championship. Yeah. Congratulations, 47 for Super Bowl 47. Yeah, I mean, even though, you know, I, speaking as a citizen of Palmer. Uh-huh. You live there? You know, we'd <laughs> never have a Super Bowl at, like, Cannon Yards or M&T and, 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 and you know, have the lights go out. <laughs> That's true. What the hell is that about, you know? That's because they're all drinking them hurricanes on the streets. It's New now. Orleans, the city that care forgot. Well, they care forgot to turn on the light bulbs. <laughs> <laughs> Were you so su- glad they got them light bulbs back on, and they almost took it away from us. I'll tell you yeah. right now. Were you surprised when they lost current? I went current. <laughs> when the current didn't run through that stadium, uh-huh. I was ready to say this. If, we had, if they'd come back... Them Niners, yes, with Frank Gore, yes, and uh, and Kaepernick, yep, and and if they'd come back and made a run right. and 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 by some chance win that game, I I think we could we had a viable protest. Do, do you think the momentum changed when the electric went out? What to bears poop in the woods? Of course they did. <laughs> Buzz, yeah. Of course the momentum changed. They almost came back and lost the game. So there but was then, a factor. You know, it game, almost then. made it more special because we was all celebrating early. Yeah. And, and where where did you watch the game? I watched it at my aunt's house. Your aunt? Debbie Sikorsky. What is she Aunt Debbie. Aunt, Aunt Debbie. Debbie's house, yeah. How is she? She's older now. She's 73. She's uh-huh. got a row house? She's got a row house, and we always go over there for the Super Bowl, mm-hmm. and Aunt Debbie makes her special treats. Like what? Well, she like, makes a uh, marshmallow pie, uh-huh. which is uh, Aunt Debbie's marshmallow pie. It will, will, not, will knock your, your thing in the dirt. I'll, I'll, bet, I'll bet it would. So we eat Aunt, Aunt and, and it's, not a, it's not a sweet pie. Really? Oh, it's, it's a savory? It's, it's a good. savory and sweet. It's savory oh. Like Thanksgiving. Right. <laughs> so when she makes her special marshmallow pie, mm-hmm. we go and we eat that. And we get all the family coming Aunt over. Debbie. Aunt Debbie. Uh-huh. Aunt Debbie. <laughs> well, that sounds like fun. Aunt and Debbie and my I cousin say. Rick. Rick. Rick Sikorsky. Hey, Rick. Uh-huh. And we have a good time, and everybody enjoys themselves. That's and we great. And we rock and roll does through she the have game. A, does she have a big TV? Oh, she know. Now she's got a regular size. Uh, you know, the regular size. The old How big? Of... What's regular size? It's a regular size Zenith she's had for like 150 years. 13 inches. It's color. The quality well, goes good. in. It's color, and we got to get the game in on the rabbit ears. Yeah, of course. Uh, sure. Yeah, we don't have no cable. Hey. It came in okay. Not like in them, them rich people. Right. Well, I still enjoy the game. I don't enjoy the commercials, though, because they're kind of fuzzy. What about Beyonce? Beyonce? Oh, you know, she's all right. I, you know, I was too busy, and I was in the kitchen with Rick. Rick, well, yeah, Rick Sikorsky, knocking back a couple of natty bows, having some Doritos. Oh, did you drink? Good for you, huh? Did you drink? Sure. <laughs> it's Super Bowl, you <laughs> moron. <laughs> hey, he don't take it out on me. Why are you talking about all these silly questions? You're not talking about the fact that they won the game. They did. They and, did. and congratulations. Yes, Oscar. Joe Flacco, MVP. Joe Flacco, God. Uh-huh. Wow. wow. Really? <laughs> Joe Flacco is a god. I don't care about the commercials. Right. I don't care about Ray Ray. Mm-hmm. I don't care about all them Niners. I just care about Joe Flacco, who's wise beyond his years. How old really? is he anyway? Huh? How old is he, do you suppose? He's 28 or 29. And he's going to Disney World? He's going to Disney World because he's MVP. Sure. And the Ravens have a world. Bulmer has a world championship. Did you think you'd see the day? I never thought I would. Yeah, and great. you know, the thing is, after I eat Aunt Debbie's marshmallow pie, uh-huh. I'm at a row house. Yes. I get a little of the uh, you know the collie wobbles down south. I understand. Oh, really? so a, lot that, rich, uh, a lot of rich food. That little power failure down in uh, the city that what? Yeah, the care for God. Yeah, whatever you call the it. The Big uh-huh. Easy. That city, that gave me a chance to go, uh, you know, relieve my tension, if you know what I mean. Right. I had the pain. Oh, oh, I had I thought the pain. You, meant, you I thought you pleasured yourself. Halfway through. No. no Rob. What the hell? You well, disgust, you said you you disgust me. Food. I know. I, yeah. Halfway through. Halfway through uh-huh. the second quarter, right? Yes. I got a little of the pain. But so it was and nice. so I said to Aunt Debbie, I said, Aunt Debbie, uh-huh. 
your marshmallow pie is doing it again. <laughs> and so uh, in the second half, right. you know, when that power went out, yeah. I, I took the opportunity to go uh, sit on the uh, Debbie Bowl. And you I know it's the that, Debbie I'm Bowl, sure. which is what we really should have called the game. Uh, it was the Balmer <laughs> Billy Bowl for a while there. <laughs> I'm not kidding. I, I was I broke a sweat. How is and that? she keeps wow. your house cold. Of course. She, well, she's cheap. Yeah, what do you want, Mark? I was going to ask you, were you a part of all the festivities after the Super Bowl in Baltimore? I saw it was, no, it was just chaos no. Not my style. No. 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 I went back home. Yeah. I went back home, just uh, went to bed, you know, about 11, 30, 12 o'clock. Well, and your you know, stomach was bothering and, you, Yeah, too. well, I had a little queasiness, yeah, you know. After sour that, stomach. That, but now it's fine. You know, once I, you know, took care of the pain, mm. but my God, do not go in there like that Jim Carrey movie. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you love yeah. that. Dumb dumb I love that movie. I've got all his stuff. It was He's a funny track. guy. Yeah. When's he going to make another movie? Another what? But the Baltimore <laughs> Ravens are champions of the yeah. world. Yes. The Raven rules, baby. And now it's on to spring training, and let's see what the O's can do. How about two championships in a year? That'd be something. How, how about two championships in a year? Can they do it? How likely is I that? I think they can. Good. How likely is it? What do you mean, how likely is yeah, it? I mean, the, the O's look pretty good speaking next year. Of sports, you don't so even care. I don't. You don't care. Well, then let's start <laughs> we, the damn show. Yeah, let's do that. <laughs> it's the Mike O'Mara Show. You can listen to the Mike O'Mara Show at www.mikeomarashow.com. Stay tuned for an outstanding entertainment program. It's the <laughs> Mike O'Mara Show. Let's get down to business. From the entertainment capital of the world. You boys want anything else? No, thanks, dear. Just the old ball game. All right, I'll be in the kitchen if you need me. Let's see. We'll get the old set warmed up. Move into position here. I like sit nice and close, don't you, Joe? Fine, fine. Now, that looks good there. That's, that's pretty good there. Yeah, that, that's fine. Yes. about right. Perfect timing. Never missed a kickoff yet? This promises to be a whale of a game. The San Francisco 49ers and the Los Angeles Rams. Oh, I mean, the Rams are right up there on the weight department. But these 49ers edge the Rams. About and that's your phone? Just watch the game, Joe. Eileen will get it. Whoever it is, she'll tell him I'm not in. Relax. All right, both teams are all set. Now the ball's placed on the kicking tee. We hope all of you are settled in a comfortable chair, ready to watch pro football at its very finest. Well, who do you think is going to pick up the marbles? I don't know. Those Rams look pretty good to me. I'll take Green Bay every time. Yeah, but they're playing the 49ers. Sure. It's the Mike O'Mara Show. Mike O'Mara. Buzz Burbank. Rob Spiewak. Oscar Santana. And now, from his couch, here's Mike. Live from the Cappy Pfeiffer Super Bowl Center. Yes. This is the Mike O'Mara Show. Man, we have a great time on Bourbon Street last night. It was great. <laughs> we are downloaded worldwide 17 million times and powered by Encore Insurance. We're at MikeOmeraShow.com, 102.9 WTNT in Washington, D.C., and the mighty 1630 KCJJ in Iowa. Today is the day after the big day. Yes. February 4, 2013, and uh, we're delighted to have you along with us. Our show is brought to you today by something that every Everybody should remember. What's that? Valentine's Day. Oh, yeah. Oh, God, I love it. Technically, it's not brought to you by Valentine's Day. You know no. what it's brought to you by? Hmm. Cherries. Betty's. Oh, the best oh, Betty's in town. Those are so there good. is a product that comes into this studio on occasion that does not last, and those are Sherry's Berries. These are strawberries that I believe are genetically engineered <laughs> by, uh, you know, they're not elves. They're actually trolls because they're, they're oversized. Oh, okay. So these they're... strawberries that they raise under the bridges, they, they grow as big as your head. They're just plain big. They're massive. And they're, they're absolutely incredible. No, I kid. They're perfectly normal berries, and but they're, they're huge. Delicious. Yes. And uh, it's sexy to send your special somebody. A big juicy strawberry in the drenched produce. in chocolate. In the produce world, Mike, they would be called primes. Primes. The best berries mm -hmm. out there. The prime berries. Sherry's berries are. Turn that music down, Rob. You got it. The sexiest berries oh, ever. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Giant, freshly dipped strawberries. Oh, this is making me uneasy. You know. In your choice of chocolate <laughs> and your choice of toppings as I can, well. I kind of like it. You can get white. Milk. I can only do this when I've had like a Super Bowl party the night before. <laughs> I think we all could do that voice today. <laughs> or dark chocolate with swizzles, oh. nuts, or chocolate chips. Prices start at just nineteen ninety nine. And you can double your berries for just ten dollars more, and do that. Yeah, it's what we call doppelberries. Oh, the initial it. run of these berries, everyone's going to eat them. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then you're going to need more be gone. for yourself. You'll want them. That's right. Save over forty percent when you use the code TMOS at either eight six six fruit zero or when you click the microphone at berries dot com. Berries dot com. That's what you want to remember. Mm -hmm. Click that mic and uh, enter TMOS. Limited time offer. So get on it now. Sherry's berries <laughs> now. Now. Sherry. 
Barry's. No. Barry's. I'll make it through. <laughs> at Barry's.com. And uh, we have tried them ourselves. Oh, and, yeah. uh, we even got a little turned on with the boys in the room. That's right. <laughs> they're, they're unbelievable. Yeah, right. <laughs> anyway. It uh, was Michael Mara's shirtless Barry party. <laughs> oh, what a day. What a day. What a day yeah. at Jimmy's. On the program the today, we will recap our fabulous Super Bowl party. This is not the kind of Super Bowl uh, recap you've heard on other programs where <laughs> we're going to talk about the commercials. Hey, uh, how's the ad meter look? Because the fact is, <laughs> when we have our Super Bowl party at Jimmy's, we make our own fun. That's right. Yes, we do. And, and we, we have did. our we have our own special moments. We have our own exciting moments. Uh, Friendships have, are forged. Yes, yes. Uh, <laughs> relationships are cemented. Yes, relationships are severed. Some are shattered. That's no, right. right. It's uh, a on the program, at least this is my personal recap. We all have our moments that right. we'll share. Uh, it's uh, old queen trivia is a big hit. Yes. Uh, Rob, uh, his daughter, and their new friends. Uh, and then Wolf has no filter. Uh, Robin Buzz don't watch the game, and um, and then uh, Oscar will be discussing uh, his fight with the Moody's yes. and uh, all the good Chuck times. and Barb Moody. Also, uh, Food I have a pet peeve. It is a now a recurring theme mm-hmm. on Facebook that I will share with all of you, and I'm okay. sure you might agree with me on this one, Rob. Uh, I am juicing now. I want to talk about that a little bit. <laughs> and I'm not talking not about steroids. Muscular. Oh, no, thank you very much. Uh, and Mark will hopefully retrieve the lost tapes, and then uh, you know we'll, we'll talk about. RJ and his penis hands. <laughs> I, I, I look so forward. Can you start with I, yeah, that? That's related I, to the Super Bowl. I'd almost like to start Can there. you start with that? Because I don't understand where this is going to go. I have to start with the beginning of the game. Because okay. this is just a throwaway. And I want to do this chronologically. Okay. Because Oscar's stories come. I, I'm putting them at the end because both of my uh, topics today end with Oscar Santana. I Good. Know. So we will get to Oscar's fight as, with the Moody's. As many great stories do. And Oscar uh, encountering RJ in uh, penis hand land. Hmm. Wow. So, so Can't that's, wait that's to hear. Right. But let me just start with uh I want to start with Robin Buzz. Mm-hmm. Because uh you know everybody's ready for the big game. I get to Jimmy's at about 12:30. I watch the entire <laughs> hockey game and then with this is no disrespect to Jimmy, I suffer through mm-hmm. the Buffalo game because as much of a hockey fan as I am, I'm not so much of a hockey game uh, hockey fan where I can sit through an opposing team. You have to have a rooting interest. I mm-hmm. have to have mm-hmm. a stronger yeah. rooting interest, and I just didn't. And it was the Florida Panthers against the uh, Buffalo Sabres in the second game. So they're the, playing a football team. The Caps, shocker, get waxed right. in the first game. Again. Pittsburgh just houses them. Mm-hmm. I predicted that when I walked into Jimmy's. Caps I lost. sat down next to this young man, nice guy, with a Caps jersey, mm-hmm. and I sat my first words out of my mouth. Yes. I didn't even say hello to him. Sure. I sat down and I went, all right, let's get session. They're going to get their ass kicked. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, and it was true because yeah. I just I vibed yeah. on that. I knew it was going to happen, and so that they were never in it, were they? It might have set the tone. It might have set the tone. Mm-hmm. For, oh, sure. Because all of my uh, I rooted for the Niners in the Super Bowl. Right. I would love to see Buffalo win because Jimmy's my friend, and right. I'd like to see his team win, especially when he's having the the big game on mm-hmm. in in Buffalo. And all of my teams all lost. All three of the teams. I was zero for three. It was mm-hmm. a very depressing. But maybe this week will be better. My moment, and I and I nudged my wife at the because she was the one that was closest to mm-hmm. me. This is at the beginning of the Super Bowl. This is at kickoff. Kickoff, mm-hmm. and the game begins. Mm-hmm. And I look down at our table, and really, even the m- most minor sports fan, mm-hmm. it's the big game. And mm-hmm. I look yes. down, and Rob and Buzz are both just playing on their cell phones. <laughs> Not the slightest <laughs> bit of even remote interest. Not even as spectacle is there right. any concern. You two, I looked over at Carl, I said, you want to know why we didn't get a gig at Comcast? <laughs> and I looked down, and there they are. And there is, uh, you know, I think it's time for both of you to fess up. Well, Buzz has. But it's time for you, Rob, to fess up. You are no more interested in anything sports-related. How have I ever all. have I ever denied that? Well, you did like doing that run where you were the announcer at FedEx Field. I tried. You faked it for a long. Well, it, you faked it more than anybody. Well, you know what? It was important for the career path, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> keep us go. on track. But I truly, <laughs> I, I just don't. I don't care. I mean, yeah. it was a lovely broadcast, and the colors were very bright. Very bright. And there was singing. But you're able to, the, the thing about you, you're able to entertain yourself. And, yeah. uh, you know. Sometimes with, twice. With, with Buzz, I, I finally allowed, I said, Buzz, you know, it was going on 1030. We had the power outage. After I, the I, blackout. And I'm yeah. looking at a man who, Buzz. Did he look you, miserable? He, no. He did, no. because he's too much of a professional to look man. miserable. Good but man. I've known him a long time. Yeah. And I you knew. knew. 
You know, I sensitive. know that he's miserable. Uh, yeah, he's. You're, I, you're, I wasn't, good, you're good for the first I, maybe hour. I wasn't miserable. I was kind of at the zero mark. I was neither happy nor unhappy. But I was right, running? right down the middle. Which is how he lives his that, life. As far as the, <laughs> as far as the, yeah, that's pretty much true. As far as the kickoff goes, rarely are kickoffs eventful. I saw most of the major runs. I mean, most of the major drives. I saw. Okay. And enjoyed. I Did they you? Were quite thrilling. Yes. See, maybe yes. it's me. Maybe yeah. it's me. I, so uh, yeah, there were brief moments of enjoyment on my part. But what's funny is like. Right as the game action. starts, I mostly like, not interested. Yeah. yeah, were you guys checking the and weather? And it's not like yes, they're checking the dome. Day. They're just, you know, they're just having fun. They're, <laughs> they they're playing inside, their Facebook silly. Page. But so, I do, you know what? I did get to a point where I'd had enough to drink that I was yelling when big things would happen. Well, no, you, you love to yell. Listen, you don't. It doesn't matter. <laughs> it, I'm not worried about you. <laughs> you yell at it. I'm not worried about you because you will make it. You bring the party to wherever you're going. Nah. Mm-hmm. And and you know, on a day like that, when you uh, when you meet new friends, yes, uh, you know, and our new intern and his lovely, lovely girlfriend. Who Rob just did? Rob not fuse to them. He did. Yeah. Rob was attached to them. Well, for the I, entire what I like game. to do, what I like Whoa. to do, is set out something to do that's tricky and see if I can, you know, uh, achieve something, a goal. And the goal was to talk to his girlfriend and look her in the eyes. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> this is no oh, easy. Oh, this is no easy oh, feat. Oh, oh, oh. Oh. <laughs> but I think John and Jessica left in tears. I think. Well. Jessica yeah, came over to me. Yeah, yeah, I did. Yeah, yeah because Rob's mm. new friends and uh Jessica came over with John mm. and at one point stood in back of Rob and Carrie who had completely discarded their best friends yes. for the new shiny new couple. Something shiny, something new. And it was and you were and you were terribly rude to Jessica and well, John. Rob has said that he's they've been looking for something better. No, no, you remember? Uh, yeah. No, no, you we see you're misquoting that. me. You're misquoting so me. True. I said we're trying so to do better about socializing. Here comes, oh. here comes the bus. You say this is see, what happened. You, you, you're doing better. You do much better than I do. I, Carl and I don't socialize with anybody. That's I mean, right. we, we really don't and I and I regret that. We both mm. regret that because we live in an area where you know, it's not couple centric. You know, Mrs. but I guess you got to make more of an effort. An Carl and I aren't ready to Mrs. make that. Mrs. Spiewak had a really good time yesterday, just simply because we were out of the house. Yeah. Right, she was I'm so sure. excited. That's why we kept our kids out till midnight. So you because have it to was address. Yes. You have. We'll get to the. Uh, we'll, we'll get to the fact that Rob is so drunk that he loses his daughter. But well, hold yeah. on, <laughs> hold on, just a second. Mm-hmm. When you, when alert. Jessica came up to me and said, "Well, I guess they've thrown us away," or something along those lines, uh, and well, and I watched John and Jessica come over. And you are leaning towards the uh, Josh uh, and his girlfriend. The new couple. Sam. The new couple. And you are just engaged with them for the entire day. Well, I have to say that and Josh is friends, a wonderful conversationalist. Your new <laughs> friends came over. Yeah, I like you. You know, I'm, yes. a, I'm a fan. Yes. I'm a Josh fan. He's Good a great guy. guy. We and, all you like know, him. and you know that at, at one point, your old friends, yes. Jessica and John, right. couldn't be nicer people in the yes, world. Very, very nice. true. And very they true. came over. And uh, and and stood in back of the table, hoping, wedged waiting. in, hoping for just some a morsel, a morsel, and you, a, you know. categorically blew them off. It's you know what? It was an ugly time for all of us. <laughs> <laughs> they left early. They did, and tears. They left early yes. and in tears. They yes. left early. Yes, yeah. they did. You're, and it, I, I I suppose that uh, where where does that friendship stand now, Rob? I don't know. We have to see. <laughs> yeah. so you don't care, do you? No, I care desperately. Do you really about all people and all things? Do you, I, I see. Well, I'm I, that is dripping. Yeah. That comment that is dripping with sincerity. sincerity. No, no, no. I care. Why now, aren't you uh, hanging out with them? Yeah, because you normally sit down in the corner. with them and that's your your place and you left them to babysit your children no 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 oh the, my, that's the child true. julia found her way to the, julia thinks that jessica walks on water they love each other yeah well it just seems to me as a responsible they were parent, babysitting you well, why, more attention well to you know what child. about uh, responsible parenting perhaps that's not julia, my top that's not my top quality julia is like my cat monty she just wants to escape Yes. I think, yeah. yeah and Julia find really, a better home. She did not care for the company at our table. You were a little ashen when, uh, at one point. Yes, this was a bad parenting moment. I looked down at Carla's phone. <laughs> yeah. And I see yeah. Rob had either accidentally or not accidentally sent out a group text. It was a group text that had already that gone said, out. Do you have Julia? <laughs> Question mark. Am I asking, asking about his kid? Was, asking was, about his child. Because it was after John and Jess left, and I mm-hmm. believe the Whaley's had also left at that time. Who and, are the Whaley's? Uh, Suzanne Whaley. Oh, Suzanne. Yes. Mm-hmm. yes. And Suzanne then, and Ben. Ben, right. of course. Okay, all right. And Suzanne and Ben. They had sent a group text saying, be careful, there is a policeman at a hi, certain Suzanne. location. Hi, Suzanne. Want to say hi to Suzanne. I chatted with her a bunch last night. There was a How are you feeling today, certain, Suzanne? I'm sure. <laughs> just as well as all of us, I'm sure. Oh, my God. There was a Policeman at a location at a location that was a warning text ah. to watch out, ah. and that's what what, what. what? What? 
They sent a group text that said there's a policeman at said location, so be careful not to stagger when you get to your car. And I know, uh, see, I know rules. You can't say that publicly. We have microphones in a PA system. Mm -hmm. And I'm glad when that went out that nobody had the microphone that would say, hey, by the way, that's illegal. You can't warn people that there is, you know, hey, you better watch out. There's a cop outside. You can't do that. It's a First Amendment? It's an ABC violation. Really? So um, they, they had gone, and they sent that warning text, and I looked around. And I looked where I thought Julia would be, and Julia wasn't there. And, and then, I walked the bar, and I looked outside, <laughs> and I had Carrie check the bathroom, and so I just said, "When you came back, do you the, have wait Julia?" A <laughs> when you came back from the front of the the bar, right. where you're looking, that's the first time I saw on your face with through all the multiple shots. Yes, it was quadruple shots of Irish whiskey. You were they you kept were bringing freaking. That. I was I did not like it. You were freaked out. And I, I so what I did is what Eddie dad would do. I picked up my cell phone. And I called Julia's cell phone. Uh-huh. This may be. I have been with you. I have seen you drunker. I have yes. seen you have seen me drunker. I've seen you drunker. You know, we have both seen each other, but this was in my opinion. Nothing will sober you faster than terror. Oh, but yeah. it also oh, yeah. is one of the drunkest things I've ever heard you say. When finally you came well, over to called, me. Well, she called. I called. She answered. And <laughs> I said, where are you? And she told me. She and where, I verified. Where are you, Julia? And I hung up. And I came Hello? back. And I sat by Mike. And Mike said, did you find Julia? I said, yes, she's over there. I didn't recognize her. <laughs> <laughs> they grow up so fast. <laughs> That's what he said. He said. And I, I my said, hand Rob to God. says to me in his drunken, in his drunken, he goes, I swear to God, she looked like she was 22. I know. She does. She was over she in the corner. In the and, and you know what? You're her own daughter. I didn't realize until yesterday she's taller than Shannon now. Yes. Yeah. She yeah. looks like she's 22. <laughs> and she had up. she had her hair Most pulled back. Most middle schoolers are taller than Shannon. That's true. Most true. elementary hey. school students That's are true. taller than <laughs> Shannon. Right, but right. when you said that to me, and I forgot what the verbiage was, how uh-huh. you put it. Do you I remember said, how you said it? I looked right at her, and I didn't even recognize her. <laughs> and I wasn't, I wasn't to the drunken point yet where well, some, my vision was compromised. Someone right. would sure. say that if you're hammered and you don't recognize your child, it doesn't really matter how tall they get. Or That's what, that's what relatives that haven't seen them in months feel. <laughs> that's true. You see that's her true. every effing day. But here, not to really deflect, I will say this. Carrie, who was stone cold sober, never stood. Right in this situation, didn't get up. No, so it oh was left God, on me. Didn't. Am I right? <laughs> she didn't. No, so I am. She didn't. Move. Do you know what I am? I am the responsible drunkard. <laughs> command the command. Center. You looked scared. I was now, did scared. Carrie, did did Carrie uh, lay it all on you? No. Did she? Uh, but, but you were the one that they you just took up. the reins. I just took the reins yeah. and, and, yeah. and found her. That yeah. and oh my God, where could she be? Where right. could she be? Mm-hmm. She was where she had been the whole night mm-hmm. in the corner. I just didn't recognize. Did you go her. outside when you went to? Did you like look outside? Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's just silly. Have you guys seen my daughter? <laughs> oh, can I get a cigarette? <laughs> Julia! Yeah, she's out there smoking. <laughs> <laughs> Julia. At that point, if Julia. I had seen her with a Marlboro, I would have yeah. said, cool, just stay here. <laughs> so, <laughs> so you found her. Yes. Uh, she was sitting down w- deep in the combines yes. of Jimmy. Yeah. At, at the table where you were supposed to be. Well, I was sitting with the show. Oh, I know you were table. sitting with the show, mm-hmm. but normally Carrie hangs out right. with everybody. But no, it was the new friends, Josh. And what's Josh's girlfriend's name? Sam. Sam. Yeah. Sam Mm-hmm. Okay, Sam. she's very nice. Oh wow! Yeah, very nice. Really? Can I can I read what you texted to me? Uh, well, yeah, <laughs> that go depends. Ahead. Yeah, <laughs> sure. And Josh saw the text light up, and I wouldn't let him read it. Okay, which I think is perhaps best because I was oh, saving dear. it for now, today. Now see, now let me just point. Uh, let me let me go. let me paint the picture for you. Yeah. I am at the far end of the table. Yes, right. And Josh's girlfriend Sam is at the opposite end, so long there is table. it is a very long table. Mm-hmm. I'm not I'm not even with an earshot of her. No. I, I I simply am observing mm-hmm. Rob, who uh, you know is is in, ignoring He's doing the Rob the show. entire <laughs> world <laughs> yeah. and doing a show for her. So I texted to Mike, "Nice tie on Jim Nance." You okay. replied, "Does Josh's girlfriend want a chicken breast sandwich?" <laughs> <laughs> Subtle. And it popped up, and Josh yeah. said, hey, uh, let me see. That's what I am, Mr. Subtle. Please. And Josh said, hey, it's let me see a... that text. I said, no. <laughs> that's all. Oh, my God. Uh, it was a special day. It yes, really, it really was. was. It was a wonderfully was special fun. day. And you know uh, what? It was the she, long- she is. Is she as nice as she looks, though? Yes. yes. She seems yeah. like one of the Great nicest people I've ever seen. Yes, yeah. it was a lot yeah. of fun. Did you do some conversing? Oh, a little bit. Yeah. Shocker that you were. Yeah. Well, you know, I mean. I say, Buzz, I know. It's written. And Buzz, you weren't even watch-checking or looking. I, I made the two. But I said, really, and, uh, you know, I said, please, mm-hmm. please. Because I felt 
uh, you know, I should be the the one that stays till the bitter end here. I should be the one that's uh, that's there. And it ended up being an amazing football. Yeah, game. it did. Yeah, I, I mean, love that, so. Mike. You're going to take the bullet and stay in the bar. <laughs> no, you Good know boy. what? No, because I was with a young lady who was not drinking. Right, and ah, yes. so uh, she was really for her. It true, really, you know what it really from the does. The bottom of my heart to Carla, I know, and this we're really, you're mm-hmm. really going to hear me say it. it. Takes the shine off the apple, doesn't I it? I know how long suffering you were in that. Yeah. Part. it was a long day long of day. of breath and drunks, and Carla hung in there, and yeah. finally for her Eleven sake, hours for you I guys, wanted it. Right? Yeah, I'm feeling it today. <laughs> but anyway, it was a good time. We'll come back. We still haven't gotten to. Oh, there's uh, so much more to talk about. My lovely conversation at the end of the evening with Wolf. Our friend Wolf. Uh-huh. Wolf has no filter. The sausage no, game. no. Unfiltered sausage. And I just wanted to give him a big thank you. And uh, also Oscar and his uh, experiences with the Moody's. Chuck and Bart. And RJ's hands. We'll take a break. Come back. This is the Michael Mara Show. Now, girl, still ain't right. You know, it's nonstop with our crew. It never ends, ladies and gentlemen. It never does, Mike. If you were at Jimmy's and had a a gay old time, (laughs) I'd like to urge you to have an even gayer old time if you go to Quench and uh, enjoy Quench for Knowledge. It's uh, this coming Thursday night, Mm -hmm. February 7th, at Quench in Rockville, Maryland, one of our favorite joints. So Join Rob Spiewak, Mark Ronick, and their lovely assistant, Diana Ash. It's all happening at Quench, and uh, it's America's favorite trivia game. With five big ways to win big. It's terrific. Quench for Knowledge. It's fun and it's free, and you can enjoy the signal your cocktails and the cuisine that make quench your best destination anytime bring your friends i think you ought to be recovered from sunday absolutely by thursday to go and, have a good time. and you know what's great is based on the strength of its performance at jimmy's we will be having a category of <laughs> oh, old no. queen trivia i i will tell you i ask uh, well join them it's yes, going to be come on out it's 8 30 p.m thursday february 7th at quench 9712 a treville gateway drive mm-hmm. in rockville for more information visit quenchnation.com they do they do great work out there and uh, Rob has a great time on Thursdays with Mark and with Diana, and you guys will have a and blast. It's, it's team trivia, so even if you come as a single, you find yourself a team, you'll have your, you'll have a blast. So I come up with this idea for Old Queen Trivia, and I said, Rob, uh, just uh, let's let's have some questions about. Uh, you know, the, the great thing about this show and the, the great collaborative effort that is this show is that we will come to each other and somebody will say, uh, like Buzz and I uh, developed a, just a fantastic idea for one of the live shows Should that I fun. can't share with you now. But right. uh, Buzz came to me with the initial idea. Then I uh, punched it up and then we, we went back and we forth and, we, and it was fun. The same thing with this whole idea of Old Queen Trivia where I say to Rob, Rob, let's come up with some mm. questions that really have nothing to do with football. Because the whole hack thing to do would be Super Bowl trivia football yeah. oh, trivia sure. in and we 1969 went the, uh, we went yeah. the other way and i say this Literally. to rob and i immediately he doesn't need any more explanation no no, no. he knows exactly oh, sure. what i want and i i read the first question mm-hmm. and my jaw drops i am i remember the my first question laughing. this famed duo is responsible for writing <laughs> my fair lady yes <laughs> that's where it began and nobody knew the answer no one, which was no. even better and except for a few select people it that was come up. it was a blast <laughs> old queen trivia i think it went over tremendously yeah, well it is. Gangbusters. and you know people can see that in action the halftime version of that game on our facebook page oh really I've posted video oh, 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 really? really? Yes. Cool. That's yes. awesome. I'm sure there's not much slurring there. <laughs> <laughs> or on our YouTube page. Please oh, go great. to our Facebook page and check it out. I enjoyed every moment of that. I thought it was better than uh, rating the commercials. Yes. Because mm-hmm. when you're in a bar, you can't hear can't the commercials. Hear. You can't do it. You can't no do matter it. what. You know? And so The one commercial that I did When we got hear, DJZ to finally turn down the music. Yes. Or, uh, or uh, And turn up the television. Yes, exactly. The one commercial that, and I don't know why, maybe because it was late in the game that I did hear, and I thought it was the, of the ones I saw, my favorite. Right. Did you like the Paul Harvey spot? I did, farmer spot. Yeah, I, I, I can't. It. I can't. It was amazing. I'm going to go uh, on YouTube today and yeah, watch it all. I actually have the, I have the audio in the vault, so I can play you some of it. If Let's you want. hear. I, I hear that's yeah, that's getting very well the visuals, recorded. Though, the, the visuals are amazing because they're they're very oh, vintage goody. looking photographs of farmers. And I understand this Paul Harvey sp- uh, the recording is actually from like 1978. Mm-hmm. Okay. But they use this is for Dodge. Great even without pictures. some of it here. Yeah. And on the eighth day. God looked down on his planned paradise and said, I need a caretaker. So God made a farmer. God said, I need somebody willing to get up before dawn, milk cows, work all day in the fields, milk cows again, eat supper, then go to town and stay past midnight at a meeting of the school board. So God made a farmer. 
It was a 90 second spot. It goes yeah. on like tribute that. to farmers. Yeah, yes, well, yeah, and then day. and the farming spirit and the American spirit, and they turned it into a Dodge Ram commercial. Mm-hmm. And it was cut from the same cloth, I guess, as that Clint Eastwood spot last year. Okay, but. I think this one better. better. And yeah. it's, his read is so chilling. He's you're such right. a great broadcaster. Yeah. Well, that, you know, it was. Uh, it's tough because when you're in there, you know, in previous yeah. years, we have uh, done the rate the commercials. Thing, right. And the rate the commercials just doesn't work. I think it's just let mm-hmm. people hang and watch the TV show. Right. And, uh, you know, everybody's going to be talking about the uh, the different moments during the Super Bowl. We'll let uh, you other people spots do that. Online. We were doing our own thing and having a fantastic time. Uh, you know, as the day went on, uh, Oscar had a, mm-hmm. a moment. The Moody's, who are our dear friends, who yes. we talk about, Chuck and Barb Moody, the Moody's, who come to every event at Jimmy's and are tremendous fans of the show Wonderful and people. good friends, and they were having a fantastic time. Oh, they, the party began when they arrived. Uh, somehow, at the end of the the, the <laughs> night, they brought out they brought out a huge like basket of these hush puppies. That are fantastic. Yeah, at I think what Jimmy was doing is I think he had the hush puppies for the special, and he was actually just handing them out to the bar. They had them. They, they were like they had them left over. Yeah. They had them left no, over. And they, they let everybody in, and they really were yeah. like they're they, amazing. They're you like, know what Jimmy called them? What's that? Crack puppies. Crack puppies. Yeah. and oh. they were like that. Yeah, I guess he makes them homemade yeah. there, and they're they've got like cornbread in them. And, so uh, good, I love it. And uh, little pieces of corn. <laughs> yeah. Listen, I like. I was reminded of that today. Really, I like anything with little pieces. Of corn, in not it. anything. <laughs> I like that. So uh, we ate them. We ate our fill. There were yeah. tons of them. Yeah, and you know it's late, and people have had a lot of cocktails, and it's winding down in right. the fourth quarter. And mm-hmm. well, what do you do with your hush puppies? Uh, well, I might have suggested to uh, the Moody's that they. I could knew it was throw you. Them, so throw them at off. You. I knew. So oh, I didn't know you. you were the seed of. It. I don't even know if I was oh, at that stage okay. of the game. Oh, I, 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 I might have been. Let's I certainly was not discouraging them no. for because I, I was laughing as they were throwing I, 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 them. At, see, at I think when I was watching this, and I think okay, you, I, if you were a witness, I don't remember specifically saying throw the hush puppies. He at is Oscar. the witness. I can't tell you why she did it, but I think this was something that she decided on her own to uh-huh. do, and she picked up one and she threw it, Barb. and I think what happened was because her aim was so accurate, Barb it hit Moody. it hit Oscar right smack in, in the eye, fa- like literally <laughs> under my eye, and and then she saw the joy that it bring you that it brought to you, Mike. right, right, and then I think uh, then she was encouraged, sure. and then she sure. kept yeah. going. Yeah, and it's like going making a toddler laugh. Sounds about right. You were her toddler. <laughs> so if this is this is I'm, I'm skipping ahead here because we're getting to a part of the evening where you know everything gets a little muddled. Well, the yeah, game you know? had basically ended. Yeah. yeah, it was pretty much over. Yeah. Right. Oscar and I did have one great moment pregame because I was standing for one. I think I'd gone to the mm-hmm. bathroom and I was standing by Oscar and I said, I'm going to play a game. And I tried to engage Oscar in conversation leading up to kickoff. Oh, I yelled at Rob. And at one point he said, you've got to go because you're not going to watch this, so you've oh, got to go. Rob, and he, it, he sent me away. Rob, it was yeah, great. Yeah. The, the minute there the was, was Rob to came start. to me. Yeah. Yeah. I remember I said this the moment. same thing. There. I said, Rob, shut up. It's, <laughs> yeah. The game is on. I know you could give a rat's My, ass. But you understand, you're interested in that sport, football. Yeah. The sport I'm interested in is seeing how long I can make you talk to me. <laughs> <laughs> I said, I'm sorry, Rob. Poor I love Mike. you. You have to go. The game's about to start. You did say you love me. You never said you Mike, I'm sorry, Mike you just had, said you have true. to go. You have to go. <laughs> Mike had just gotten through. Mike had just gotten through saying to me that he didn't see a single goal in the hockey game, and now, but now, yeah. now he thinks he's going to get some satisfaction. The game is starting, and you come over to talk to him. I said, "Oh, I got to watch this." All right, <laughs> I'm going to say this. Listen, with it, with a with a qualifier on this statement that. I am fine meeting everybody. Sure. That's what I'm there of for. Course, right. Of course. I am not there to enjoy the game. Right. I am telling people I'm going to be there. So with that said, mm-hmm. you come up and say hi. I'm fine with that. Absolutely. With that said, though, under normal circumstances, if you're out at a restaurant or a bar Bar-er. and you are you're looking at somebody who is there to see the game, mm-hmm. or if it's at a private home and right. you're there to see the game, sure. right. It is the same thing, as far as I'm concerned, with when you're eating a plate of food. Uh-huh. And uh-huh. both things happen to Carla and I on a regular basis. Of course, they do. Where uh, there is no regard for you know what you're doing. You're there to chat, and people want to yeah. chat, and people with alcohol want to chat even more. Sure. Uh-huh. And so uh, that, that was it. And I didn't. And I said that. And Rob comes at kickoff. Rob starts to engage me in conversation, mm-hmm. and I'm like, I saw it. "Go, stop, shut up! I'm watching the game, Rob." You I were saw, very nice. You were, yeah, very, you were nice. very nice. What did I say? You were nicer than Oscar. What did I say? <laughs> you said, uh, "Kick off, not now, go." <laughs> 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 Kick off, not now, go. And is it my fault that you are so much fun to talk to? <laughs> because you know, really, there is that. There is that part of it. Is that 
one of the best things about an event like that sure. is the people watching. Right. And you and I have yeah. taken people watching really to the third level. Oh, I mean, it's, maybe even level five. You and I can amuse ourselves for and, hours. And so you know what? And I will be more. I'll be more uh, uh, aware of that in the future. Well, it was for the know, next Super Bowl. Show. Normal <laughs> circumstances. If we're just hanging, yeah, it's fabulous. Right. right. In fact, we ought to be like sequestered. We ought to be put over in a corner right. we where no one else can hear I what agree. we're saying. Right. Yes. Awesome. So um, the Moody's and I made up after <laughs> Good. Chuck and Barb. I, I had to go yeah. over there and yell at her and say, "Look, it's a." Fifth one, you've already hit me and my girlfriend maybe two or three you, times. You, when you, you get mad, your eyebrows go up so high. Well, it takes a lot to get me pissed you said, off. You've got to stop or something. What did you say to her? What I did said, you say? after the fifth one, it stopped being funny. Enough. And then wow. walked away. You didn't lob any back. No. Okay. Well, See, I'm, now now my delinquent side yes. is, yeah, he's like, sorry, you're right. It was funny. And then you go back and sit down. That's when we throw the sixth one. No, right. I think she, I think she <laughs> and was somehow upset. it becomes She realized I was pissed. I went yeah, back in the pot and I was like, look, right. we're all good. I don't know. It would have been I exponentially funny. The, the thing that got me out of the entire game, while well, the people were amazing that came out and hung out with mm -hmm. us, watched the game with us. Right. Uh, outside of Rob's sideshow that he was trying to create during the game. Right. Um, and I forgive you for being too good for the table. I what, no, <laughs> my kidding. coworker it's, sat in my seat. We had people that it was yeah. Like, hello, yeah. it's our table, but anybody can sit. Besides, yeah, Shannon is. had to stand so she could see the screen. <laughs> so I'm in the restroom and I walk in and in Jimmy's um in Jimmy's restaurant. You know we've talked about it a million times. Yes, there's only small. two stalls. There's, yeah. a, there's a crapper and there's a urinal. Someday he will have a big boy's yes. bathroom. Yes. Someday. So I walk in. And a and private bathroom for disc jockey. I, well, with that, that's a dream scenario. Someday. Yeah, and right. it's tight quarters. So yes. I walk in mm -hmm. and we're three deep inside mm -hmm. of there. The guy in the crapper, myself, and a guy who's waiting to either do one or two. Right. And I say, I said, I'll be done in a second, man. Mm -hmm. uh, no worries. This isn't a big situation. Right. And out of the crapper, I hear a voice I recognize. And it's R.J. Diaz. He says, <laughs> "If you're uh, creative, uh, Mr. Santana, you could use the you could actually use a sink." And I said, <laughs> "And I said, R.J., I haven't peed oh, in a sink yeah. since uh, freshman year in college." <laughs> right. And the guy right. behind me is like, "Oh wait, oh wait, oh wait." So then that's over. Like the guy's not going to. So he was you, in, were you was in the, the stall. Were you under the impression that R.J. was making big potty? No, RG was doing. No, I could tell he was standing up. I okay. could see. Well, I, he's got his issues. Down I, I there. could yeah. see. Yeah. So he's dealing with a lot of pain. Yeah, you know, I so, saw RJ in the bathroom too. He might have spent a lot of time in the bathroom. I think so. I think so, he's so, and we wish him well. He yes. rolls out of the stall. I'm washing my hands, and out of the blue, I feel what is basically a TSA pat down <laughs> of when someone says, "Hey, yeah, go team." But he knows I'm a Ravens fan, right? right. Uh -huh. So he's like, "Go Ravens!" And he's patting me down, oh. patting me on the back. Inappropriate. <laughs> in a men's room. I'm washing my hands, and he hasn't washed his <laughs> hands. <laughs> <laughs> so I got penis fingers all over my back. <laughs> That's amazing. And I, in my mind, I said inappropriate. And I yeah. Wow. Oh, oh, a rough hilarious. night for you. Yeah. yeah. Oh, but he, you know, it was over there, and Tomo seemed like he was enjoying. I had a great time. Tomo. At one point, I, I thought he was about to fall. How drunk did he get? Yeah, pretty drunk. Yeah, I have never drunk. seen Tomo with undivided attention more than when that Beyonce halftime show. Was that was on. the only oh. time he looked truly content. He was. It was amazing. Amazing. Riveted to that, yeah. it was a music video. What? It was a look. She I is loved it. she is easy on the Shocking. eye. She is easy on the eye. But uh, but the level of I still mm. want to see. And, and everybody's going to say, oh, it's not old farts. It's young performer. It's no Beyonce is a contemporary artist, sure, right? And I would like to see. I just love to see live performing. The 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 look and the reunite uh, the the reuniting with uh, Destiny's Child was fine. But it was a music video. Better than Madonna. It was a yeah, yeah. Better than Madonna. But Madonna but was yeah. but a music video. And you know what else was bad about it? It it's, was like it's like it was made for TV. It's not a live yeah. show. Yeah. Can you imagine how disappointing you had to be if you were there and trying yeah. to watch that? Because the whole thing was camera tricks, angles, and right. and, and filters. Well, on I the, thought it was awesome. Oh, it was a disaster. But it, she <laughs> is. I mean, I, I the, you know, it's impossible to look at her and not see a stunning person. No, yes. I, but oh, when she was walking around the stage, when she has that bad naughty look. It's like right. yeah, when she's walking around the stage, that's why I'm going to start walking. <laughs> With the same outfit, yeah, and start. Same outfit. I'm gonna. <laughs> start. I mean, that's they, how I'm gonna walk. They <laughs> took care of her bottom half, you know, with the uh, lace and all that. Yeah, uh, yeah. I thought that just was a fabulous nice. look for her. And, nice and what's what's good is that she's got curves, and yes. I think that's yeah. great that they, that they celebrate that. You know, I sound like one of the guys. She's got curves. Way to go, Brent. <laughs> who doesn't want to see curves? Yeah. <laughs> but as far as the performance, th there's she's not. There's a reason she did the lip sync thing mm. at the national anthem at the inaugural. She is a studio creation. She is. 
Yeah. And musically, she is. She's got some pipes. She's got some chops. But she is a studio creation. It's she very is true. very difficult to, to make her sound good without that. Any That's questions? Any questions? Thank you. <laughs> we will take a break and come back with more on our Super Bowl show Listen from the Michael Mara Show. Footsteps coming up the drive. Listen for your footsteps, but they don't arrive. Welcome Waiting back to the mic. Oh. You'll edit that out, right? Of course. You'll edit that out in yes. post-production? Yes. Yeah, if we recorded it today. Now, after Yay. you, uh, you know, everybody knows the, the next big thing after the Super Bowl is Valentine's Day. Right. I thought it was in, the Oscars. In Rob Spiewak's house, they don't celebrate it. Right. However, in our house, uh, yes, we do. And there's no better place to go for your best deal for what every man should do for his lady mm. than Pro Flowers. Oh, yeah. She will be impressed when you turn to Pro Flowers on Valentine's Day, and her friends will be impressed as well, and that will impress her even more. Okay? So many right. impressions. Listen to all that impressing. It's about that. Here it is. 100 blooms of love and a free glass vase. Do you say vase or vase? I say vase. I say vase. vase. I say vase. I say vase. Face, vase. In your vase. 100 <laughs> blooms of love and a free glass vase for yes. just nineteen ninety nine from our friends at Pro Flowers. Mm. 100 blooms. That's a lot of flowers. And, you know, more is better. Is one, of them, a is, that. Is one of them a matte bloom? Mm. Yes. And, they, and a lot of colors as well. It's about a Fifty percent <laughs> off at Pro Flowers. What a great time to do the fifty percent off! And for another ten bucks, two more things she'll love: a spa kit and gourmet chocolates. Mm -hmm. Use the code TMOS. Now, this one, folks, we'd love you to help us out this yes. year because everybody does this. Just remember the Mike O'Mara show when you go to Pro Flowers. Right. You call eight hundred Pro Flowers or you click on the microphone at proflowers dot com and you put our TMOS code in there. Do it while there's still time. You won't beat the price. All of us on the show use them all year round. Proflowers.com is ranked number one by J.D. Powers in customer satisfaction for online flowers. We've used them for that? years. They are the best. Don't go anywhere else. Go to Proflowers.com. And please, there are millions of disc jockeys out there mm -hmm. uh, that, are, that are giving you their codes. But who loves her? Please, Help we need out. it. Help we need out. it, and and really, Pro Flowers is somebody that pays attention to this. Mm -hmm. And if you know, we really appreciate their business, and they give us more if you support. Right it. On. So TMOS, that's the code. Remember that. All right, getting back to the Super Bowl, uh, I will tell you that uh, the, the Moody's uh, have patched it up with you, yes. Chuck, so yeah. everything is okay Thank with that. That night, we, I, I mean, as far as I'm concerned, they are family and they are good people, and we're good. They you and Shannon good should have them over to play cards. No yeah. chance. Yeah. Now I may have to apologize to Wolf after this brief little. Uh, uh oh, saying. what's going on? Well, and I want to discuss uh not the specifics of the power outage but the, the, there was a vibe mm -hmm. there was a vibe for this super bowl last mm -hmm. year we had new england and new york right. it was electric boogie woogie woogie, woogie. I, I remember mm -hmm. this year <laughs> different there was a different vibe maybe because we're all surrounded by redskins people mm -hmm. and it there was just, a quiet urgency Mike. there was not there were people that you know Baltimore, there were some Baltimore Two fans in there coast. showing the colors. Yep, there yeah. was a smattering of 49er mm -hmm. fans in there. But the energy of the game, maybe it's because of the power outage, maybe it's just because mm -hmm. of the nature of, of the whole deal, mm -hmm. it seemed that it was kind of blah, and we and, and it was just kind of lacking. And even before the power outage, the game was, in many people's eyes, over. Oh, completely. Oh, yeah, right. And so, that, I mean, that was, that was a when bad thing, too. And when they ran back the uh, the opening kickoff for a touchdown, I said, that's it, it's right. over. Right. You know, right. What were you going to say? I mean, I was that's the first game I really paid attention to in a long time, as far as the Super Bowl is concerned. You're connected because you have a friend who is on the Ravens, yeah, but, and, uh, but, and you've been kind of connected to the Ravens but, for a very long for time. For a while now. A but I answer. was actually, um, for me, it what, what I guess what was, for you, kind of a... Uh, you know, uh, a game that wasn't as interesting as last year. Clearly, yeah, kind of a throwaway you had your game. team. You had the Giants in exactly, there, exactly right. Um, and for me, it was it was just as fun because I was watching the game. Uh, outside of that, I felt like a lot more people, especially even when I went into the restaurant, they were watching the game. They were there because of Baltimore. Now, but there was a bigger attrition rate at Jimmy's uh, for the game people. Yes. We walked in at 4 o'clock. That joint was balls slammed. to the wall. Yes. It was slammed. slammed. And more people, I thought, bailed on this game oh, than I've it was ever a seen. Yeah, because is that what it was? It was well, a blowout, Is that yes. the primary it's reason? It's both. It was a blowout and that power outage. You know, that mm -hmm. was a 45-minute power outage, and I think some wow. people just said, you know what? It, they're they're going to the call Ravens are, The Ravens are yeah. crushing them anyway. They're probably just going to go away. home. Right. Well, it, That's what I said. And, and we're, you know, and we, and after the halftime where we were 
were balls to the wall. Mm-hmm. We had loads of people in there. I think that's when it just kind of went in a certain direction. Mm-hmm. So when you have that, you, you, we're, we're the TMOS group is as good as the game. Yes. We can't talk or entertain during the game. No. Right. We, we can we can make it occasional. Last year, I think we did a little yapping during it. But, we, bit. but this year, you know, my feeling is when the game starts, there are people in there that really want to watch yeah. this game. The game so does I'm not set the mood. But the we, we had a great time with everybody, and we're interacting. And I, you know, I was aware that there, that, that people were bailing out on this game mm-hmm. because there was just something about, I think, all the hype. There were a lot of people that were there for a very long time. Yeah. And more than last that year. That game would have been a crappy game even for the most diehard of fans. Right. Because after a while, you kind of lose focus. You said, how right. many more points can they score? Exactly. Mm-hmm. And while every time they scored, I was happy. I almost wanted to see a good game. Right. Yeah. Of course. That and second game, that second half of what I call the second game. Right. <laughs> that after the it, power outage? Yeah, that in itself, I mean, while it gave me nightmares, it was a better game. Right, yeah, of course. Yeah, well, and it turned out to be an amazing game. Yeah. It actually did. I want to give props to the guy from Aaron's that was at Jimmy's that provided Jimmy with his uh, TV sets. That was great. Aaron's Rents. It was and, awesome. Uh, it was, uh, they were great. We uh, were looking at a beautiful Mitsubishi. I have never seen a better television picture it was perfect. in a bar mm-hmm. in my life. I've yeah. never seen a television picture like I'm, that. I'm really critical of that and kind of know a little bit about the signs of that. It was perfect. Buzz was and I were talking a little TV yeah. and... Uh, so you uh, you you're, you love television more do, than anybody course, loves yeah. television. Both the technical and the program. Share end, with but, me know. share with me what you shared yesterday because this is kind of interesting for people. You know, Carla got mad at me because I looked at her and said, "We need to get a bigger screen." Yeah. About you mean <laughs> about how do we? I think we all thought that when yeah. we saw those. TVs. You were talking about the prices on TVs, and then you were talking oh, about the technology yeah. that's on the horizon, which is kind of cool. well. Okay, uh, yeah. The big news uh, for consumers is that if you think the prices are pretty amazing now for fifty and sixty inch TVs. Uh, what I read and heard the last week is that those prices are expected to drop by half in this calendar 50% year. 50% off what Why? they are now. And uh, well, part of it is competition. I didn't mention this to you. Part of it is competition from China uh, against the Korean and Japanese manufacturers who have been making them up till now. But the other part of the reason is at the Consumer Electronics Show this year, the unveiling of a new Higher high def, super high def. Ultra HD. Are you ready for this? Yeah, Ultra HD. Thank you. That's the now, correct name. With four times the detail and resolution now, I didn't of the high a, def you're looking at now. I didn't give a rat's ass about yeah. 3D. So like, I didn't. I didn't right. give a rat's ass about four, 3D. Three twenty. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Wow. So so ultra high def is on the on the horizon. Right. Can An you even imagine sharper, clearer picture, like looking through a clean window? Can you imagine how bad Barbara Harrison was going to look? <laughs> <laughs> We're doomed. So how good? Will ultra high def TV be? Well, just more detail. I mean, if you will literally see every blade of grass, whereas you feel that you can now and you can to a certain degree, this will put that to shame. Four times Imagine the, detail the masters. and resolution. Yeah, now, All those blades of grass. Oh, my and God. And you know what? The Masters is the, uh, that is the item that you use to sell high def television. No, it, it's big screen TV, too. The first right. time I ever saw a big screen TV, the Masters was on. I swear to God, mm-hmm. I saw it in April, mm-hmm. and I'm watching the Masters, and I said, oh, my God, this is, this is the best. Now, when they did the rollout of HD, and I'm guessing it was, what, like 10, 11 years ago now? Longer right than that. Now, yeah. It's but, actually been longer than and that. And it was so slow and mm-hmm. so gradual. And I remember the first thing I saw in high def was a tennis game, oh. and the guy said, you've got to come over at 2 o'clock on Sunday because CBS is doing something in high def, and we can look at yeah, it. Yeah, and right? that, that's because right. it was a slow rollout. Yeah. How I fast also, is this rollout going to be? I, you know, I don't know. Oh, and first of all, none of us in this room, and most of us listening, maybe except for Todd Moore, won't be able to afford yeah, the right. new television. So it's going to be super expensive? Oh, yeah. You just, can go just pick like, one up in his Tesla. Just like this high def was. This high def that we're all watching now was actually introduced at the Consumer Electronics Show in the mid to late 1980s. I remember seeing it wow. when it was first introduced. And yeah, so it was a very slow very rollout. Slow. I have a question. Sure. Will uh, the ultra high def, mm. will that have to, once again, just like high def, You'll have to have programs that are broadcast. Yeah, there in are, ultra if high you def. bought one right. today, you, I mean, it would be worthless in my eyes because there isn't the program available okay. to shot in ultra. Okay. The, the good news, though, and like with this high def, is anything that has been shot on film, whether a million years ago or last week, if it was shot on film, uh, you will see more detail uh, without having to make any technological changes. For example, the, well, there used to be the HD network, and they mm. were scrambling for programming. Mm. For years, they showed Hogan's Heroes. Because it was shot on film, and they just had to block out the uh, the size again, of the picture, and it looked again, fantastic. Even if it's that movie that was shot on film, mm-hmm. and it's not being offered on like the HBO in Ultra, right? Will it be that different than what the standard high def is now? 
Um, you, you'll have on to, an ultra you'll, high def you'll, TV. Yeah, you'll need yeah. a new set, and HBO will need a new channel or have to change one of the. So the waiting to game begins it. again. Yes. Exactly, it's the whole thing all over. <laughs> Not again. in our lifetime, yeah. Mike. Yeah, yeah, yeah it will be long days. <laughs> but the but the thing is, uh, I remember with with HD that it was just it took it took a, a lot of time. Mm-hmm. Yep. And I also remember the difference was. The jumping off point, I mean, I remember when, when it was finally available to everybody and we were seeing it was becoming more common, it was such a departure. Right. Will the will it be, with the standard HD that we have now, mm-hmm. will it be that much of a departure? Will it be absolutely, if you put... Four times the detail. Well, but if you put, but even that, I mean, uh-huh. right now, HD... How good is your vision is what it gets down to. Watching that game yesterday, if mm-hmm. I, that's, when I, that's why I'm asking right. this question. If you put that game and then you put an ultra uh, HD set next to it, mm-hmm. will it be... Incredibly noticeable, like it was yes. going from regular depth to yeah, high. Yeah, people that are, uh, were at CES and saw these TVs, they, they were blown away. Yeah, really, you will see the faces yeah. on the it's very people exciting. in the crowd. It's a it's, very exciting, and, not, and I wasn't like excited watching, about 3D at all. It'll be like seeing Mike's picture at the inauguration. <laughs> um, <laughs> is the size ratio of the screen going to stay the same? Yeah, that'll stay the same, and and so will the receivers. You won't need a new receiver. You won't have to buy an adapter. You won't. You'll want a TV that accommodates the higher resolution. But as far as you remember, before when we switched to high D, all the channels change to different right. frequency. That's not going to happen again. We're done with that cool. part of it. Can yeah. an HDMI cable carry the signal? Absolutely. Wow. That's neat. Well, thanks That's for that a, update. That cool, I was really fascinated when you were talking about that. And, you know, for me, uh, also coming down 50% with the uh, TVs, mm. HD TVs. That's what I'm excited about because that I can do. You know, really, and maybe it's uh, as you get older, mm-hmm. you know, as you get older, your and eyes I, begin I, to eyes go. Are failing. Yeah. You know, I'm yeah. sitting here failing yeah, eyes. You know what? They were gonna need the to larger the <laughs> screen, the better for me. Louder, please. I, Oscar, TV. Oscar, <laughs> yes. at one point when we were watching the game and I was standing like a foot away from the television, yeah. uh-huh. I said, this is fine. Looks just as good. This, this is, is re- fine. This is really cool. <laughs> With high def television. I I'm you, standing I, one foot away from a 75 inch screen. I, I don't thought, care. I thought you were hammered. I was like, he's got to be hammered. Viewing distance makes no difference. No, I was saying, at one point I'll show the, uh, you know, the Ustream people right now. Mm. I'm looking at it and I'm just going. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Look good, too. Would you really like good. another drink, really Mr. Cool. O'Meara? So we talked about the fact that it was the blowout and also the blackout. The blowout and the blackout resulted in a uh, an early departure for a number of people. Did anyone think that the stadium would black out before Oscar? <laughs> <laughs> the majority of fans that were there were before the 49ers. Well, it was frustrating. It was close. I, yeah, I couldn't tell who would be Well, when we, when we did the, the, when Rob was doing his pregame, pregame, mm-hmm. pregame show, mm-hmm. he, uh, he actually called out, and the bigger roar, the pop, was for the 49ers fans. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, mm-hmm. and uh, you know, well, and I got Jimmy is close to the Bay Area, and you know, I'm, I'm, I'm all in. I'm, st- I'm sticking in. You know, I'm saying, hey, we're going to see. I'm going to stick into the end and see what happens. And man, what a comeback for San Francisco! Oh, yeah. And then just crapped out. And yeah. I, I, I mean, San. What Francisco, was your nickname for their quarterback? Uh, Johnny Panic. Panic. That's right. <laughs> panic. Panic. You just panic, panic the QB. <laughs> I mean, ridiculous panic the QB. Packer Nick. He's panic. a rookie. He's panic. a rookie. I mean, he really, really freaked out and yeah. panicked. But he's a rookie. It's going to happen, you know. And they're he's like, good. you know, you got to have that. You got to be at the dance a little bit to to be able to play. In well, a game it's his like second that. year, but so he's not necessarily right. A but he's a rookie right. as far yeah. as uh, his first year starting. Yeah. So yeah. it was, uh, you know, it was disappointing for San Francisco fans, and it was disappointing for me to see that people were, were burned out because right. the game yeah. was such a so lopsided, and then we had the blackout. So uh, I'm sitting there, but I'm enjoying the company and uh, Wolf. Wolf, the uh, bratwurst king. Yes, uh, he rolls up to me, and uh, Wolf's a friend of the show. He's advertised on the show, and he's right. been a friend of the show. But Wolf has that that lack of filter, you know. Do you think it, it, because of Wolf's his, uh, very opinionated? Mm-hmm. He's not from around here. Wolf began to piss Mark Ronick off about two years ago, <laughs> and uh, and and Wolf, you know, Wolf comes up to me, and a very nice guy. But Wolf walks up to me and says something along the lines of. So I noticed the the vibe is different in here. You know, last year was so much fun. What's mm-hmm. happening this year? Like, and he's saying it to me. I don't right. know what he said specifically because it's late, right? And I'm, but it's said in that tone. And and Rob, Buzz, you were it's there. Almost a the, complaint. I couldn't hear him. And but it's like a complaint almost. All I know is I looked over and he was kneeling at your side, uh-huh. talk, talk, talking. And, I, and, and your face me, was not that of a happy person. Right, well, he's that telling me basically that you know that we what happened to the party? We yeah. had a better yeah. party last year. Yeah. I'm like, yeah. it's like, I. It's not us. It's the game. I don't control. No, we don't. We can't. The set- party, and he's kind of an idiot. What's the matter? You didn't have the liveliness. What's the last year? Now it's like a morg. A it's morgue. like a morg in oh, here. No. And I'm like, okay, I don't need that now, Wolf. <laughs> I at got- the end of the night, Wolf, no filter. Say whatever on your mind. Spew it out. <laughs> 
You know, you know for you know, Christ's sake. You know what's great about that conversation? <laughs> what's that? Is I probably got it two seconds before you did. Because uh, oh, Wolf God. brought it to me. But you know, I, I saw him going up to yeah, each and every yeah, person. Yeah, but then yeah. I said I said to Wolf, I said, Wolf, I was in Scottsdale last year. I had a great time. What are you talking <laughs> about? <laughs> He's like, oh, okay. And he walked away. Uh, he went straight to you. He went to me. Yeah. Wanted to share some joy. And I just want to say that really, hey, Wolf. That really uplifted me <laughs> at the end of the evening. I mean, what the hell am I supposed to say to that? I don't control the game. I can't. I didn't. I didn't cause the power failure That's down right. there. And we. I thought the TMOS crew was completely entertaining yes. and lively. And friendly. Did yes. we talk as much? No, we didn't. No, we left it to the game a little bit That's more right. because we all decided that that was a better thing to do. But when we instead talked, of the constant shtick, it was great when we talked. It was, it was terrific. <laughs> it was really great. Uh, first of all. <laughs> Let me just say, at halftime, uh-huh. and I, we didn't plan it this way, but it worked out this way. At halftime, we had uh, the Old Queen trivia. Right. During uh-huh. the analysis, not during Beyonce, but we, during the We analysis. had a major announcement that we will not go public with from Jimmy. I don't right. think he wants us to do that okay. yet. We had Old Queen trivia mm-hmm. and Jimmy's announcement, and it, were, and it, and it led up perfectly at half, halftime to the Beyonce Perfect. show. Yes, we did, actually did. That everybody it, watched. We actually timed it up better than CBS did. Yeah, much. <laughs> it, was, it was great. So, I mean, I just wanted to say, you know, hey, Wolf. First of all, get back on the air. Advertise with us. Yeah, know? come on, yeah, man. Be... Then you can tell us all how much yeah. we suck. Uh, yeah. Th- you know? <laughs> that's a privilege you must pay for. He didn't for. say we sucked. I don't want to no. overblow. No, that's no. true. Nine, but it was that nine, kind of filter thing. Nine, nine. You know, there's a, you, look, I don't want to stereotype because God forbid I ever do that. No, that's but, not what we do <laughs> no here. One Mike, on that's show. not what we do here. I went that. to school with some Austrians and with some Germans, and there's that, that kind of thing where they walked up and go, well, you would look better in that shirt if it was a little looser on you. Oh, uh, very blunt. <laughs> yes. I mean, I played with a German guy down in Florida, right? Um, and and right. I'm, I'm sitting there, and I'll never forget this as long as I live. I'm spraying the ball all over the golf course. <laughs> I'm having a terrible back nine. <laughs> and I walk up to this skinny guy, that, you know, and he goes, well, I said, man, I don't know what the deal is. And he, I swear to God, he doesn't miss a beat. He goes, the deal is that you just have to play better. <laughs> I wanted to take my driver and give him a suppositor. Well, you just have to play better. Oh, boy. Oh, thank you for the lack of the filter. And, you know, in a way, culturally, it's probably an honest, a more honest I, society. Yeah, 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 sure. Yeah, but you know what is. I mean? And we don't have those. We have filters in America. That's oh, right. we're very different from the Germans. Did you get any of that, Mark? Did you get any of the... Uh... No, he doesn't really talk to me much. <laughs> no small talk? He said uh, he said hello to me and moved oh, on. That's nice. Uh, hello. That's so nice. anyway, it was good to I see. I thought him. it was fun. And and I love his <laughs> the family. Night was a great I love night. his was. family. I truly do. Cute yes. kid. But I mean at the at the end I was sitting there going, you know, oh my God, what are you stop it? Go did away. He, did he talk to you for the right length of time or did he talk too long? No, he, it's fine. It was everything's it's just fine. It's just not a cheerer up. <laughs> everything was it? fine. No. Was, I wasn't real cheery after yeah. that. Can we just quickly touch on how uh I guess Embarrassed the city of New Orleans probably is today. Oh my God! Well, as someone who roots for the city of New yes. Orleans, you do have to address. And Buzz mentioned it. It's the city that care for God. And you know, I, I, you could hear the conversation. You know, that's not my fault. I didn't have anything mm-hmm. to do with it. You know, and and it just. Who knows? They still haven't gotten to the bottom of why the power went out. They, they, uh, the electric company down there uh, now says it's the customer's fault that something happened at, at the, the Superdome Super Dome itself. Haney Electric. So yes, yeah, but so it wasn't. Mr. Douglas. It wasn't the Did local. You check your fuses. Wasn't the local electric company, but the Superdome, which uh, you know got through Katrina and everything else, uh, did did not manage to get through the Super Bowl. I lived there for well over a year, and uh, one of the things I observed there, uh, living in an apartment, even the nicest apartments, you'd look at how the the doors were hung, for example, and they'd be slightly askew <laughs> because New Orleans isn't about work or work ethic. It's about partying. It's about five o'clock. It's about it's about uh, it's the city that care for God. Ela ba. It's it's a celebratory town. And they and I mean it's yeah. just the rhythm down there, right? Exactly. And you get Very slow, and you accept certain things. Mm-hmm. You have to. just to live down there. You and, have to. And, and, if, and you loved it, right? I mean, if you oh, got yeah. into the rhythm once, down there, it's once great. I got into the rhythm, I loved. But it. you've yeah. been to so many Super Bowls. New Orleans, as a rule, handles the week before and the game itself better than any other oh, city. Yeah. There yeah. is really, it is so much fun. There is so much to do in that city. Right. It's so cool. And, uh, you know, I hope this it doesn't... Was a, it was a sad black eye. I, but, I mean, I think that, <laughs> here's the thing, and I want everybody to be very, very, very aware of this. Right. This is going to be, if they find out that it's maybe something to do with 
the league, uh-huh. they will throw New Orleans under the bus in a heartbeat. Yeah. They will not take the bullet for this. Yeah. And the fact is, I want people to be aware of that. Sure, of That's course. why when I hear Buzz say it was something at the game. That's what we're hearing. At well, the at game the dome. itself. The dome. At the dome. Right. But maybe at dome the dome management. and, and yeah. also maybe NFL management. Who knows? I heard, maybe. You know, what yeah. I heard is that Robert Kraft plugged in the charger of his iPhone <laughs> and just <laughs> overloaded. Thank you. <laughs> we'll take a break. Come back. This is the Michael Mara Show. Big. At night we ride the can you imagine? <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Back. I'm sorry. Did I do that? <laughs> Welcome back to the Mike O'Mara Show. Rob's Magic Audio Vault is brought to you by Warby Parker. Uh, anybody that goes out to get glasses at a regular big box store, yes. they're all chains now. They're everywhere. You see these places. You know the names. They're all the same. And the fact is, I, I, I was stunned the first time I got a pair of glasses. Yeah. I was stunned at how much I had to pay. Right. And uh, it's I paid four or six hundred dollars. It's it, four mm-hmm. four to six hundred dollars for a pair of eyeglasses. Yeah, right. It's ridiculous. And it's delightful to be associated with Warby Parker, a company that is now allowing you to stop paying iPhone prices for prescription eyeglasses. Get better looking glasses for a fraction of retail. You go to WarbyParker.com, glasses start at just ninety five bucks and they are fashion forward eyeglasses they fit you over the phone or they fit you online and you get these fashion forward glasses and sunglasses every pair custom fit using your prescription complete with anti-glare anti-reflection polycarbonate lenses no extra cost for that which you pay more for Mm -hmm. at those stores they love to upsell you that seem to have 600 pairs that are all uh, the same and they Mm -hmm. charge ridiculous amounts of money those coatings make them more durable too they're comfortable they're contemporary and you can try up to five pairs with free shipping to find the right pair for you. Go to WarbyParker.com, select your five favorites, and get even faster free shipping with the code TMOS. Try them for five days, keep your favorite, and send the rest back to Warby Parker. Again, with free shipping, we've all ordered our glasses and sunglasses from Warby Parker. We think you should, too. You'll find all the details at WarbyParker.com and use that code again. Do it. Giving it to you three times today, TMOS for free shipping. Uh, let's get to the audio vault right, right away as we... We are running short on time. Take it away, Rob. I'm not going to do a lot of stuff from the Super Bowl, but I do want to play you this. The actual moment of the power outage, uh, we didn't hear because we were in a noisy bar. Right. I didn't know it went down like a this. Did you? Area now a sack for Jones on a loss of six. Good no throw goal by Colin Kaepernick. He is going to throw this down the middle hmm. to Vernon Davis. Watch. But look at the safety is anticipated. That's it. They lost power to the CBS booth. Oh, so booth. they completely lost CB- their yeah. power. CBS lost most of their power. They what had was one that, live mic. But what don't was worry. that boom before? The, I, that might have Did been you hear the, that, like, boom? That might have been mm. the tower, the uh, power. Because, you know, when the, you shut off lights like that, it makes a sound. Or that cartoon-sized right. breaker switch. Yeah. Yeah. Right. yeah. The big Dr. Frankenstein right. switch. <laughs> but don't worry, CBS, because when the biggest broadcast of calendar year 2013 has a problem, mm-hmm. you're okay. Throw it to Steve Tasker. Welcome back to New Orleans. This is Steve Tasker, sideline reporter for the uh, Super Bowl Uh, 27. uh. If you're expecting to hear our friend Jim Nance, it may be a moment before he gets on. Half the power in New Orleans Stadium, the Superdome here. New Orleans Stadium. Okay. (laughs) Really? (laughs) I know you're out of your league. I, I mean, I know you're out of your element, not out of your league. I know that it's a shock and he's got to cover. Right. But Jesus, I mean... Incompetent. I think I was with mm-hmm. Mark when they threw it to Tasker, and yeah. my, my, what I said was, "Who's that a hole?" Yeah, <laughs> I mean, because I really did not expect. First that. of all, I mean, has he been at it a while or what? I mean, he well, was Mike, terrible. It's CBS. It, it was, he had the again. only live mic. All of CBS's <laughs> equipment had gone out, and only one mic was working. Perhaps and it, it was is. Steve Tasker on the sidelines. Perhaps it is a little more pressure than I gave him credit for. <laughs> Let's listen to him again. He, I don't know. I, he does just, not handle it well. This is the right. kind of talent that tends to really go up through the ranks at CBS quickly. <laughs> Welcome back to New Orleans. This is Steve Tasker, sideline reporter for the uh, Super Bowl 47. If you're expecting to hear our friend Jim Nance, it may be a moment before he gets on. Half the power in New Orleans Stadium, the Superdome here, is out. In almost a perfect semicircle of the lights, half the stadium stayed light. Half of it went out. The scoreboard is also not working as well. Yeah. <laughs> Half of it stayed light. We uh, <laughs> we're here. At we're the here. End. There's a perfect circle of semi. Go around and light power gone. Jim and <laughs> Phil gonna come. Steve Tasker side. We, what? <laughs> Let's go. Meanwhile, you know there are guys in the booth going, get the power back on. Right. Hi, this Steve Tasker, bad power, <laughs> that, that Louisiana football field, uh, Superdome, Mercedes. Do you think people are talking Jim to Nance. him in his ear? Oh, they're screaming out. Oh, they're- 
happened to be inauguration. <laughs> All the single ladies. All the single ladies. Now, everybody knows that uh, Flacco dropped an F-bomb. It was badly yeah, right. mic'd, and when you bleep it, it's not even worth playing. So congratulations, Joe Flacco, for getting an F-bomb out on the air. All right. um, Katie Couric went on a date with Larry King. Oh, this is right. This is a long time ago. Oh. She was, she was 30, which makes Larry, any guess? 60. Uh, 60? 56. 56. Okay. And what's interesting about this, not so Sounds much her familiar. story. Yeah, not a bad, not a big deal <laughs> no. in my mind. Right. But Larry King yeah, looked but different guess than what? I did. Yeah. Guess what? You're not disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> well, we, heard, we got stories about Larry King that would curl your hair. Sure. Here's, a Larry well, here's King, one of them. Uh, K- the Katie Couric talking about uh, D- uh, Larry picking her up for the date. So this is like in the early 80s, I guess. So he picks me up. He this picks me Kimmel. up at my apartment. I lived uh, in Washington. Picked me up, and I, w- I came downstairs, and he had a Lincoln Town car. He was driving the Lincoln Town car. Nice. So I get in the Lincoln Town car. He puts a tape deck, and it's Jack Jones. And, I am a singer. <laughs> <laughs> and we're driving, and we're going to K Street. So we go to K Street to this Italian restaurant. They put us right next to each other, like they do to all the men and their nieces. Uh, yeah. oh so we're sitting there eating. He had, and he ordered like veal poached in chicken stock because he had just had quadruple bypass after uh, the heart shot. attack. So I'm guessing that's got to be Duke Zebert's they went to. Oh my! That God. had to be a dish. Case, yeah, which is no Case longer Street, there. That's right. And uh, anyway, so that's the the pickup. I want the veal poached in the chicken stock. <laughs> I'm having trouble with my heart. I I, <laughs> I want the veal poached in chicken stock. <laughs> so here's a more of a Katie Kirk and Larry. Remember, only wow. 26 years difference. And I see we're going over Memorial Bridge, On and that's home. not the way back to my apartment. <laughs> oh, so I go, Larry, where are we going? He goes, my place. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God! Oh, mother of God! So wow. we sat there, and what can I say? He lunged. <laughs> oh, my. Yeah. Yeah, he and, did. And I, I almost started, oh, bla- I love Larry, by the way. Of I course. do love him. Who wouldn't but I want to have started, sex with Larry? <laughs> I started laughing a little bit because the whole situation was like out of a bad Lifetime movie. So, so I said, Larry, you're such an interesting, nice man, but I, I would like to meet someone a little closer to my age. Yeah, yeah. And it was like, wah, Someone wah. from the Paleolithic era. <laughs> and he said, that's okay, because when I like... I really like. <laughs> <laughs> now that's we're, a good story right there. It Listen, is. we were. Uh, was this? The, well, this had to be. This had to be after '85, I would think. Well, if just, he had the bypass he on your show, because that's he was right. on our show in '85. Yeah, so it had to be later '80s. Right. So it was yeah. the later '80s, and the fact about Larry, we got stories from a traffic reporter we had uh, mm-hmm. that, that told us about Larry King and going over there. Wasn't there a story about him? He came to the door in a robe, Ro- a loose robe, a loose robe. Mm-hmm. Came to the the door in a loose robe, and I don't know why she was there, but Larry, I think you know, Larry <laughs> cut a wide swath with a lot yep. of women uh-huh. in town. He was quite the uh, ladies' yeah, man. He was very driving. active in pursuing these women, uh-huh. and. You know, one thing I want to say about Katie Couric, it's not she's found, in my opinion, her this is where she should be. Yeah, right. She, she should be in this kind of, was this she, on her show? This was on Kimmel's show. She oh, it was on Kimmel. She shouldn't right. be anchoring. No, she was uh, this right. is good because she's really now, I've known Katie, uh, you know, she Katie had her very first debut her big break. Uh big break uh when we did our show to the Soviet right. Union on the old Don and Mike show. And she's yeah, she's very funny and she's got mm. a great sense of humor. Wow. And I, I I think she but this is I like to see her like that. That's the Katie that's great. Great person. Now what's great about that is I believe every syllable of that story. So do I. However, in 2009, Larry King was also on with Kimmel. And Larry King gives his version of the date. Oh. Of Katie Couric's date? And it doesn't jive. And anyway. I think we know why. Yeah. Because he's a liar. Yeah, he's a liar. <laughs> <laughs> but here's Larry it? King talking about the same That's date. Awesome. Yeah. He dated a lot of women. I did. Uh, including of them. Katie Couric. One. He's so disgusting. Married a few of them. Married a few of them, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I did. I dated a lot. He dated a lot of women. I did. Uh, I including a few of them. Katie Couric. Once I took Katie Couric. Out. What happened on that was day? A, <laughs> she was working. In, she was working in Washington at Channel Four, and I was doing my show. What I, year was this? Eighty-one. Eighty-one. Wrong. Okay. Wrong. Wrong. And uh, we had a very nice uh, evening, and we're driving home, and I thought I'm going to go up to the apartment with Katie and I. And, yeah. Uh, but she said she had a roommate. Oh. And the roommate turned out to be Wendy Walker, who is now my executive producer. So the wild yeah. thing there is, according to Larry... He's lying about going to his place. Yeah. Right. He tried, he said, obviously, since nothing happened, he can't make that up. Right. So what he's saying so, is that so, she shut him down by not letting him to her apartment. Yeah, but the fact is, they were going to Larry's. 
Then they turned around, and I bet Larry still wanted to come up. Yeah, uh, sure, sure. And then Katie said, sure, "I have a sure. roommate." So well, that left a part that's of the story. Yeah, oh. left that part of the story. That, 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 I know Larry King. <laughs> I know Katie Couric, and believe me, I'm going with the. That's Katie what you Couric think? Like, oh, I do too. Wow. That's hysterical. Yeah. They were like we're their best friends. And did anything go on between the three of you? <laughs> <laughs> Jimmy Kimmel rocks. <laughs> you know, I. I've never tried that. <laughs> nothing did. No, nothing happened with Katie and I. That was that just nothing happened. But I liked her a lot. I still regard her as a great friend. Yeah, well, that would have been something. That's How long ago did he do this? 2009. No one will be yeah. leave her if she says, no, it didn't happen. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, that is your magic audio. <laughs> hey, and I love it. That's the tale of two cities right there. <laughs> yeah. We'll take a break. Come back with news and buzz. That was a wild card, Rob. We'll take a break. Come right back on the Michael Barrett Show. Shout All the single ladies. Anyway. What's your favorite artist, Mike? It's Chuck Brown. Oh, uh, and the Soul ah, Searcher. Yeah. Yeah. DC. Invented go go music. Uh, hey, great send off they gave Chuck. <laughs> Thank you, Rob. Weren't we at Jimmy's for that? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We are back. Yes, we are. News time. <laughs> we made it through almost. almost. We're almost at the finish line. Let's get news now with Mr. Uh, Buzz Burbank, a man who could tell you every down in the Super Bowl. Yeah. But he was not allowed up to Katie Kirk's apartment. No. <laughs> well, she had a roommate. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Nothing happened. Take but it away, Dan. The news, her as a friend. News today brought to you by your Valentine's Day gift headquarters. For gifts, it's the Mike O'Mara Show's Amazon page. Right now, save up to 75% on select watches, 60% on select jewelry, and another 20% off both if you use your Amazon rewards card. You'll find clothing, fragrances, and so much more when you shop at the Mike O'Mara Show Amazon Amazon store. Visit and bookmark our Amazon page at MikeOmeraShow.com today, and we thank you. A football as we know it might be changing. At first, it was the new science about concussions. Then President Obama said he'd have to think long and hard about letting a son play football because of the potential for lifelong injury. Now, NFL Commissioner Roger Goodell says the league is looking at low blocks as a source of the kind of injuries that make players miss games, even entire seasons. Goodell told Face the Nation Sunday he knows the fans like the fierce play, but that they also like to keep the players in the game and that somewhere there's a happy medium. I think got a lot of Redskins fans that feel that way right now. And yeah, uh, you sure. don't want to see the game. I mean, it is, uh, it's truly amazing. There was a massive brawl, uh, during the game yesterday. Yeah. And, Come you know, on. these guys are just, uh, amazing specimens, uh, regardless. You know, they're big they're, and strong. I mean, is just, what they are. it's scary. It really is. And I, you know, I think you can have a great football without, uh, the level of violence that's in the game. And you're, you're hurting people. People, and you're ruining their lives in many cases with yeah. concussions. But so I'm the most important it. thing is they got Bob Schieffer to get to the bottom of it. <laughs> I <laughs> felt so, fa- so Bob, sorry for him. He's that, a big fan. Though. Well, I, I love yeah. Bob Schieffer, yeah. and I hate of the fact that, that they take the, you know, so they give the entire day, mm-hmm. CBS gives the entire day to right. the game, even their news program. Yeah, I know. And they make Bob Schieffer interview Goodell. Oh, he looks forward to it. I, I guess, but yeah. I just think it cheapens it. <laughs> yeah, Poor guy, because I love him. I agree. Uh, Goodell says the league is also talking about keeping a third-party neurologist on the field to decide whether a player should be sidelined or continue after a bell ringer. Can we get this party started? Uh, I was going to say we can get that neurologist in here right now. Hey, player, <laughs> there he is, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, Rangoon. <laughs> the anti-government survivalist who's holding a five-year-old boy hostage in Alabama has been allowing food and medicine into his underground bunker, and the boy seems to be okay. So maybe Jimmy Lee Dykes will also allow some birthday cards to be slipped into that bunker as well. The hostage turned six later this week, and with the standoff already in its seventh day, this is conceivable. The birthday cards are being gathered by the residents of Midland City, Alabama. Police continue to negotiate with Dykes through a 60-foot-long ventilation pipe into his survivalist bunker. Um, I heard an analysis. They say the kid is probably in a state of terror right now. I would think and so. I just That, that broke sure. my heart in two. I, I cannot believe that, and I hope the... You know, I... I, there's no other option they have with the, the the logistics of this situation, but I just pray. And uh, if you're a praying person, say a little prayer for that kid. I'd oh, like absolutely. to see that kid get. I'd like to see this end safely. Have they determined whether or not uh, definitively he has television down there? Uh, no, I haven't heard because one way they're or the back other. and forth saying and that's they why think they're very... he might, and that's they're, that make it really hard for them to cover the story. Yeah, and they're very uh, careful about the narrative now right. uh, that they're giving on the news mm-hmm. because they think he might be watching. Right, right. Uh, the, the other thing to consider is that uh, the the hostage holder 
uh, in this case, uh, Dykes has shown some compassion for the boy. So uh, it's even possible that the Stockholm Syndrome is already developing, where the boy has even, for all we know, come to like his captor. Well, let's just, we I just, know. you know... I don't know what the. I think we might be going into some strange territory we don't here. Know. We just don't. As know. far as how long this should last mm-hmm. and whether they don't have really any options. I mean, right. this is this guy. You know, controls this thing, and, and and police aren't saying what his demands are. Right. So we don't know uh, what it would take to get the boy released. All right. Uh, President Obama hits the road today to campaign for tougher gun laws, but he's already lost the support of fellow Democrats on one aspect of his plan. Democrats in the Senate say they're abandoning their push for a ban on military-style assault weapons because it's simply not winnable. I have to stop you there because Carla and I watched uh, cops the other night. Mm-hmm. Rarely watch cops, and I want to tell you. I, I said, there's your second amendment. They bust this guy, and I guess there were 11 or 12 sh- uh, shots fired in mm-hmm. his apartment. Oh, my. And it's down in Florida. I think it's Dade County. And you see this guy come out, and he is not only elderly. He's not only mentally ill. Mm-hmm. He's not only filthy dirty. He mm-hmm. looks just disgusting. But he's completely a closet case. And he's talking about, but when he gets a moment of lucidity is when uh, mm-hmm. they ask him what he's got. And he's oh. got, I got an M14. Can talk about I got two blocks. Oh, and, you see the eyes. Mm-hmm. and I went, I said to the cop, there's your Second Amendment at work right there. I mean, really, you look at a guy like this and you say to yourself, well, there's a guy that can just go walk into yeah. any gun store and he can load up. And he's armed to the teeth. He's got guns all over his house. And he's shooting them into the wall. Well, hopefully that changes. And even gun owners are saying that they're for registration in many cases. Cops right. is still on. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it was great. Yeah, right. it, cops will live forever. I suppose so. Uh, so uh, the Democrats abandoning uh, the ban on assault weapons, but they say they will, along with the president, continue to push for a ban on large capacity ammo magazines and better background checks. Uh, they say they'll also push to make mental health part of all background checks. That's an idea being pushed hard by the husband of shooting victim Gabby Giffords. That's former astronaut Mark Kelly, of course. Mm-hmm. Uh, House Republican leader Eric Cantor. Has a plan. Can I just say what? <laughs> Way to go, Congress, on That's that assault favorite. weapons. Backing off on that. Way to go, House Stand your ground. Way sure. to go. Yeah. Well, Got the other guys were armed. What yeah. were they going to do? Exactly. Uh, House Republican leader Eric Cantor has a plan. He's proposing that Republicans change their image by stopping the whining about cutting the federal budget and have them instead put their focus more on helping American families. This softer approach may be one of the lessons learned in the Republicans' most recent presidential election defeat. It's also how Cantor plans to push for changes in the tax code, something the Republicans very much want. Changes. What do you think will be more effective, that or like a casual Friday? Oh, I'd like casual Friday. Casual Friday Friday on the Hill would be nice. Especially with John McCain. It's about time, don't you think? Hey, baby. A lot of terry cloth for him. (laughs) Pool wear. (laughs) Cabana wear. (laughs) A cabana suit. Well, that's a perfect transition. (laughs) The executive board of the Boy Scouts of America will vote day after tomorrow on whether to allow gay scouts and gay leaders to join its ranks. Hey, this is Eric Ronick from Black Gold. I don't know why that happened. President Obama finger must have slipped. Uh, Hey, I got my merit badge. (laughs) 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 President's now weighed in, saying the scouts should end their ban on gays. Obama called scouting a great institution from which no one should be barred. Merit badge in English. (laughs) Oh, Greece. <laughs> Former yeah. presidential candidate in Texas Governor Rick Perry's also weighed in saying he sees no reason for scouting to change its policy. He says scouting should not be teaching sexuality. Hey, whatever you do at your campfire is okay with me. It's and then, not. And then Rick Perry said, where am I? Nor is it planning to. <laughs> uh, some dioceses of the American Catholic Church, meanwhile, still apparently promoting its pervs. There's outrage in Newark, New Jersey, where a priest who allegedly admitted to groping a teenage boy has been promoted to heading up the Office of Continuing Education, he would, as he has agreed with police, have no contact with young people in that job. What's cool about, what's cool really about this is that you've got uh, the law now uh, getting some of these uh, right. priests yes. and seniors and high living, uh, you know, high living, high level Catholic people and, and high living to release people. some of this, these stats. We'll see yeah. what happens. Finally, sex news. And thank you, Texas, for the story about the man who apparently tried to father a centaur. No. To oh, refresh your knowledge, oh, <laughs> Centaur, for those who don't remember, is a mythical half-man, half-horse creature. Andrew Mendoza of Wharton County, Texas, has been busted for having sex with his neighbor's female horse. He told police, and I quote, I was trying to make the horse have a baby. I was thinking it would have a horseman baby. I'm Buzz Burbank on the Michael Mara Show. Wow. 
Jeez. It's a horseman baby. That's right? a little creepy. Oh, my God. Do we have to get out of here now, Rob? Are we running late? No, no, we're right fine. On time. We have okay. a minute. Are we, are we do? Are you yeah. sure? Yeah, I have 118.07. Okay, good. Oh, that's there it is. <laughs> I can tell you that our show was brought to you by Sherry's Berries. I was worried that I could do that. Yeah. It's my only mistake today. Do you think that horseman baby would eat at Burger King? Stop it. Uh, you know what's in sexy? <laughs> Not horseman baby. What? No, I'm Big, so... juicy strawberries sure are. drenched in chocolate. We're talking about uh, Sherry's Berries. How's that? A tough segue out of that. <laughs> Save over forty percent. If you uh, if you can eat like a horse, horses, <laughs> horses love them. You will love Sherry berries, and that ain't hay. Remember to use our code T M O S nineteen ninety nine, and you get double the berries for just ten dollars more. Go to berries dot com, <laughs> click that mic, and enter T M O S. Yeah, put it's, on the feedback. It's a limited time offer, so get it now. Sherry's berries at berries dot com. We love them. You'll love them, and uh, great for Valentine's Day. You'll be feeling Need your we oats. say more. So long, everybody. Bye. Thank Bye. you. Bye. Oh,